Hawaii Public Radio, All Things Considered. It is uh, Dave Lawrence, and we are here. Uh, guitar songwriter Earl Clue is in town through Sunday at the Blue Note Hawaii. We don't just have Earl. We have David Lee on keys, Ron Otis on the drums, Tom Braxton on the sax, and Al Turner, bass. And welcome, and thanks for taking some time. Oh, thank you so much. This is really a lot of fun for us. Really enjoy getting out and opening up the club is very exciting for us because it's something that we don't often do. We really have had a great time last few days doing all of what we've been doing this week. You use the word fun and got the pleasure of understanding that you cats, so many years together, what is it about chemistry, Earl, that's important that you've decided to surround yourself with these particular cats for so many years? Well, it's just, for me, I have no other pathway. You know, I'm, you know, I went to school, graduated, and I just knew in my heart that music was going to be my calling. And I was also very happy because my mom, she tried to embellish that because she really loved music too. So it's very special when things come together like this. It's a big deal for me. Like I was watching David riffing on the P-Funk on stage and, and <laughs> as you're playing it, I'm thinking, well, where was Earl right around when those tunes were coming out? You had the Atomic Dog, but then you had the real, the Parliament from the mid-70s. I was kind of doing the timeline there. And yourself, David, when you think about uh, the relationship you've been able to develop? Uh, Were you a fan prior to that? How did you find your way to Earl in the beginning? Well, it was via Parliament Funkadelic, actually, because I played with George Clinton for many years and co-wrote Atomic Dog with him. So that is my initial foray into the music thing. And then when I couldn't handle it anymore, went back to Detroit, (laughs) sobered up and stuff and started playing around town and Earl heard me and Ron and Al Turner and he said hey come play with me so that's what we're doing. Al yourself when you think about the privilege that it is is there a highlight over all these years when you think about venues maybe special times? Yes uh, every time we get the opportunity to play in beautiful venues like this Hawaii be it Tokyo New York it's a special moment. Are there places that you enjoy just getting to be on a, maybe a cultural level around the world that the band has taken you? Yes, Japan is definitely one of my favorite places to perform. Uh, the Tokyo Jazz Festival we did before, and that was a, a great concert. I love Tokyo. Anytime we can get to Tokyo, I'm there. Tom, help me with something. that. Um, who were the cats who inspired you to pick up the instrument that when we're appreciating your gift, we can kind of credit for having formed the sound that you offer. Well, as far as the music itself, I think it's Earl's compositions that bring that initial warmth because he plays an instrument that does that, first of all. It has a certain timbre that I think people can relate to. And then the way he writes, I think, is very inviting to people as well. As far as influences for me, I mean, my father is a saxophonist, But I grew up listening to all the old guys like Ben Webster, Coleman Hawkins, Lester Young, uh, Gene Ammons. It's a very long list. But that was the old school. New school, I mean, there's so many great musicians. There's Kirk Whalum, David Sanborn, Michael Brecker. So they all have something to do with, I think, uh, the way I approach the instrument. Brother Ron, I was enjoying the set. And I'll tell you my two favorite drummers. Mine are going to be John Bonham and Cozy Powell, who were some of the cats who uh, inspired you and maybe point to the moment, if it was really early, when you discovered that you had this gift or that you wanted to play. Around 16 is when I started playing. started playing in church. And then from there, I started playing in clubs. And, you know, people saying, don't go near the bar. <laughs> just go ahead and play, which I wasn't really thinking about that. I just wanted to go and play and develop my craft. And then it just grew from there, and um, Harvey Mason, Steve Gadd, man, and, you know, the list is pretty extensive. Was it gospel in church? Yes, definitely gospel. And how often would you get together and play? My dad was a preacher, so we used to, <laughs> we used to be at church on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. So it was like an all-week thing. So to be able to play in clubs, for me, it was like, oh, he's playing that worldly music. So, <laughs> you know, but I, I got away with it by the time he came around. And was that the kind of thing where he came to accept that and appreciate what you were doing? Yeah, my dad, he was really strict on my other brothers. So when I came around, he was probably like, I'm tired. So, <laughs> so he would come to the clubs, right? He was worn out. So And when he came to the clubs, they was like, the preacher went to the club. So it was kind of funny, you know. And how about rock drummers? Oh, well, John Bottom was definitely an inspiration there, you know. He's sort of the basic one, huh? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Chad 
from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, yeah, yeah. A more modern cat uh, in the mix. I mentioned how early he maybe got into the drums and stuff. And you find this early childhood development thing that occurs with some cats. They just started really early. Could have been watching the Ed Sullivan show. Could have been the Perry Como show. And in your case, you're, you're already playing at that time. But 13, you're already playing guitar for three years. And you see that. If you can kind of just describe where the guitar first came in at 10 and how it became what we have to appreciate today. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, my thing was many years ago, I saw Chet Hack on a television show on Perry Como, yeah. That stuck with me because my mom bought a guitar for me. I just wanted to play the guitar. And what I did is I just had a little silver tone. This is like, it's not real music at this point. It's just a matter of, because you're moving the thing from, you know. And so, you know, and I sit there all day, you know. It was hard to do, but not hard to do at the same time because the needle is running and you just, okay, so if you miss it, You'll get it the next time, or you'll get it the next time. And see, a lot of times when my mom was, um, she's a registered nurse, I would stay home after she went to work, and then I'd pull out my guitar some more and keep playing. Because at first she just said, oh, well, this will just be something else. But it worked out. So, yeah. When she saw that I was, was really interested in that, then everything was great. You know, there was no problems with being a musician, especially. I loved it so much. I think my mom just, she just pretty much figured, well, he's, he's not going to be a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm glad, man. I'm glad. And these guys are probably glad, too. Well, a lot of people who love your music are, uh, and we're blessed that you would tell us oh, stories, that oh, you'd share time with us. Uh, it's David Lee, Tom Braxton, Ron Otis, Al Turner. Earl Clue. They're in town through Sunday at the Blue Note Hawaii. Thank you very much for taking some time for us. I hope that this was not a hassle. I appreciate it. This is great. This is really wonderful. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This is great. Aloha, it's Earl Clue. You made a great choice. You tuned to my friend Dave Lawrence. Thanks for listening.